All right, welcome to Paradigm Shifters. It's Transformation Tuesday. <laughs> Don't you love it? <laughs> and Paradigm Shifters is a global community. And we're dedicated to shift and uplift the entire planet. How's that for a vision, Cindy? <laughs> That's pretty amazing, Judy. And your execution of it is amazing. We're just planetary here, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, and as of and today is July. Listen to this. It's July 20, <laughs> 2021. Yesterday was July 19, 2021. So July 20, 2021, we are almost at our one-year anniversary. We've been doing Transformation Tuesday every Tuesday for a year, and I am so excited to bring in this month of our topic on freedom, freedom. Let's take a deep breath into that word, freedom. Yes, we are at 1,112 members globally, 26 country, and we're gonna breathe in that word freedom from whatever, just freedom, that feeling today. And it's my pleasure introduce my buddy, Cindy Balonzi. And let me tell you a little bit about her. Uh, Cindy, and you know, you can expand on this later. And as I, uh, I hope I get this right, you went to Pacifica High School in California? I did. <laughs> yes. And that you, what I do know about you, that you're committed to a lifetime of service. Yeah. And that you were a colonel in the U.S. Army. Is that right? Correct. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> that is and correct. National Guard for 10 years. Um, actually, my, my service was 30 years oh, um, okay. of service. But yes, <laughs> I finished with the National Guard. Wow. Wow. And I also know that you ran for... Uh, Constable, Sheriff Dad Wimberly, right? I did. I did. You know, that was that was an interesting um, call that I answered. And I learned a lot in that process. And we'll yes. probably talk about that a little bit more, too. Yeah, I bet. And you're organizer of the tiniest pride parade in Texas. <laughs> uh, I, you know, we thought it was going to be the tiniest um, and it wasn't. And um, I actually I wasn't part of the organizing committee. Um, for the first one, I was just a participant, um, but you know, I'm 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 part of the group now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amen. And um, so, and are you currently are living in Manistee, Michigan? Correct. And I love this quote. And then I'm going to have you take it off. And it's a quote that I found on your Facebook page: "Is be the reason someone feels welcome, seen, heard." valued, loved, and supported. And if that doesn't sum up for me who you are. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. So I would love it if you could take it away, talk about freedom, what it means to you, and maybe some stories where you've, you haven't felt free and you broke through. Right. Here we go, Cindy. Well, you know, um, when you asked me, to speak on freedom, I was like, wow, that's just a big, broad topic. And, and where do I go with that? And, you know, as I've been thinking about, about this and talking about freedom, I realized that being born in the United States and growing up here, um, it's something a lot of people take for granted. And I took it for granted, you know, I, Oh, you're, you know, you're born in the U.S., you're free. What does that mean? And I probably didn't have any, any epiphanies or, you know, it, it's not like I was studying that prior to, um, prior to my joining the Army. And then I joined the Army in 1985. Um, I was probably old, a little older than most. I was 25 years old. I, I would tell you that I was kind of naive, but um, but I did it. 
And I didn't do it with any sense of defending freedom or patriotism or anything. It was really for quite selfish reasons of uh, money to go to school and all of those things. But as my career progressed, um, there was a shift in, in how I thought about um, just what it is to be a US citizen, what it is to defend freedom um, and, and what it really means. And I learned the most once I started going overseas and, and going to places where um, it's not the same as here and finding a, a new found appreciation and understanding for, for what we have in the US and also an understanding how much people take it for granted. You know, I was stationed in Korea and I had the opportunity to um, live the Korean culture, um, you know, at, kind of sneaking off post and getting a hooch so they couldn't find where I was hanging out. And just um, meeting some Korean women um, and learning how they lived. And I was like, wow, so grateful for what they had and what they had didn't even come close to what it's like here in the US. And that, that was a moment that gave me the opportunity to say, wow, we really, really have a lot. I have a lot. Um, and as my career progressed, um, going to different places and then ultimately going to um, a combat zone in Iraq, um, you know, there were more opportunities to experience freedom, but, but the part of experiencing it as a soldier is also really different because um, you don't have a lot of freedom as a soldier. You don't have the same freedoms of everyone that's walking around because your life's very controlled. <laughs> um, and, and your training is very controlled and the repetition of the training to get you to a place where um, you're able to respond to do the duties of the job as opposed to who you are in your heart mm. um, or who you, know, who you went in as. And so there's a transformation there from, um, from being a citizen to a soldier. And you know, I had a great career. Um, um, Iraq was uh, a life-changing experience. Um, you know, I don't think our fight or flight mechanisms are meant to be turned on 24-7 for a year. In fact, I know they're not. Um, from going to therapy, I understand that having those turned on that length of time um, can cause some significant damage, if you will, to your, to your internal systems. And um, and since I've got out, I've spent a lot of time trying to, to undo some of that, um, undo some of that conditioning, because as I realized in the last part of my career, I was in a profession that fought for freedom, but didn't offer freedom in the job. Mm -hmm. and, and those were some hard realizations to come to at the end. And I also realized my profession didn't match my heart. Um, I knew I was in service and when people would thank, me, thank me for my service, I really struggled with that because I felt like, um, sort of like a hypocrite. I'm like, I'm, I'm fighting, I'm fighting for a cause, but I, maybe I don't even know what the cause is. Um, and so there was a lot of internal conflict for me with my career. And then it ended abruptly with more trauma. Um, after I came out to the military, um, some things transpired that I never anticipated. And they put me under investigation for various things and basically forced my career to end. And so I've had now six years to reflect on all of that um, and, and finding a newfound freedom in my life. And, and I have to tell you, I found that through, um, through the Centers for Spiritual Living. You know, I, I don't 
know how well I would have come out of my deployment had I not found a place that made me feel safe for, you know, an hour a week. Um, I, I struggled and, um, and I, I still struggle finding out who I am and what my purpose is. And a lot of times I've said to people, I'm not sure what my purpose is, but I've really settled into, you know, it is of service, but how do I do the service um, in a different way? And so I think you mentioned it before. I, I'm an advocate in my community for LGBTQ youth. Um, and I, I didn't even know how that would happen, but it happened by getting involved in my community. Um, I'm the president of a nonprofit there in Wimberley still, I'm trying to transition from that, but servicing um, our community for those who need help. Um, in whatever way that is, we try to help. And then, um, and then you mentioned I ran for constable. Um, <laughs> You know, I in finding my way of of what it is I'm here to do, I got a call. I got a call one day last summer. Um, the the current person in the position had resigned and there was an opening and there was an opportunity. And when they called me, I was like, no, I don't think I want to do that. Um, <laughs> and. Um, I had to really think about it and reflect and, and I made a lot of phone calls and I'm like, oh, do I really want to do this? Um, and it came down in the end to, you know, if we really want some change to happen, you have to step into it, whether you're ready or not. And I wasn't really ready. I knew I could do it. I knew that if I got the position, I could make a difference. And I was scared to death. I, <laughs> I was scared to death and I did it anyway. And I learned a lot. I learned a little bit more about me and my comfort level um, being, you know, in, in politics, which is not comfortable. <laughs> um, and I learned about a lot more about my community and, and I learned things that, that hurt. And I, I still struggled with the hurts that I saw from my own fellow citizens after having spent a 30 year career, you know, defending the freedoms of our country. So, oh, how do I put that all together? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's been a lifetime of, of learning and evolution. I'm still doing it. Um, and, and I don't think we should take our freedoms for granted. Um, and, and at some point you just take a stand, whether you're ready or not, whether you're comfortable or not to say, this is right, that is wrong. And I'm going to now be in front. And what I found in the last five years with the stuff with our, the youth in our, in our school, in our community and bullying and um, um, the LGBTQ issues for our young youth, um, the, the dynamics of the politics in our community and the divisions we're experiencing in this country, um, all of those led me to a place to just step forward and do something. And I did it uncomfortable, Judy. I don't know that I did it gracefully. Um, I, I'm glad I did it. And, um, and I just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And what, one thing um, I'd like to ask you is, um, because I, I feel like there's so many people in our community here, which is a global community, and they're all part of their, you know, home family communities. Where is it inside where you decide? What what leads up to that making that decision to step out? I mean, to be in the front, possibly when you're more comfortable in being in the back, 
Right. What is it? I mean, I'm just asking because I hear that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I hear that quite a bit from um, the students I used to um, teach. I also am an educator, right? With, right. with that teen, uh, that teenage years. Because the youth, I, you were so active with those youth and they loved you so much you know, still do. And you were an integral part in their lives. And where was it where you're, you, I, I'm not, I don't like the word struggle, but struggle is a struggle. There's internally where you say, I've had it. I'm going to step up. I'm going to do it imperfectly. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? Well, it was, it was interesting. Um, much like when when I left the military, I, I fought back and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to be the face of a movement. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I, I, I don't want to be that person. Um, and I knew I had to fight for the, the soldiers behind me so that they wouldn't experience the discrimination that I did. Um, and I don't know that there's any anything I specifically I could point to that said, I knew at this moment. Um, it was just something I sat with and I'm like, oh, I have to fight. I didn't even know how to do anything other because I felt I had been treated so wrong that, um, that I did it. And, um, the same in, in Wimberley, you know, I, uh, with the school board stuff, it was just like, I saw something so terribly hurtful happening to our youth in the community that I, I was like, I have to be a part of the change. And I don't know what that is. And, and as I told you, um, I, you know, I like to be behind the scenes. So when I saw this happening, um, I put together a group and we just did some strategic planning in the background on how do you, how do you approach this situation and how can we do it um, in an organized way and collectively. And so I think my my military training came out in that as a as a strategic planner. And so um, that was that was a little bit more comfortable for me because I didn't have to be out in front. Um, but I there's I don't have a, a a point other than you know sitting and saying what is it I'm supposed to do in this moment. And, and look, sometimes I feel like I did it so messy that um, I'm like, why did I, why did I do it? And then um, I, I look back and say, you know, that, that it helped somebody in some way. You know, I still have soldiers to this day that call me and tell me that I made such an impact on their life. And I, I, I struggle. I have, I have friends that are now, you know, I finished my career as a colonel. They're colonels now. And they're like, had, had you not been there, I might not have made it through our tour of duty in Iraq. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, and you don't always get to know your impact. Um, but I just continue to try and be good and caring and and if I can lead, I lead. And if it's not my time to lead, I don't. <laughs> um, you know, I'll support. No, yeah. thank you so much. So I don't know that that answered your yeah, question. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it's that impact, right? You don't quite know what it is. And then it comes. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, Wow, this has been really good. I and and uh, so now you are in Michigan, right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so what? Yes. Is, and, yeah. So you're and on yet another an opportunity. Go ahead. Whoops. I got I, I got a little bit of a blip, Judy. So. Okay, well, we're back at it right now. So we're good now. Okay, we're back. Yeah. Okay. So what did you say? 
<laughs> I said, well, so now you're in Michigan on yet another adventure. So in Michigan, what was that last part? You're, you're on another adventure and where's the freedom right now for you? So, so the biggest adventure of my life to jump off a cliff, right. And say, I'm going to, um, make a major life move and, and looking for the opportunity to find some peace in that and maybe some more time to reflect and and find a different way forward that helps calm um, my nervous system you know i've i've always gone 100 miles an hour and and i don't know what it's like to not do that and i i truly look forward to the opportunity to find find another way as you know i'm in my 60s and I, I don't want to do everything. Um, I know I will always be of service in some way, but right now I, I just need to be in service to me and, and find out, you know, who I am right now and what it means to slow down. I just want to enjoy, enjoy all the things that are here and I've spent so much time just going, going, going. Um, I, I, I just want to, you know, have a respite for a moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what would you love us to, <clears throat> as our community here, mm -hmm. what would you love us to have to hold for you and Kit or you and Michigan? What would you love to have us hold for you? Cindy for uh whatever is an open menu you get it what well yeah um I think staying on the theme of what we're at the the freedom to explore without feeling like I have to do something uh, you know and that that sounds kind of weird but it it's still a freedom journey um and, and understanding more, um, more of myself as I've aged, you know, it, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to look and go, wow, I'm getting older. How much more time is there? Um, what, what impact can I make and um, still be on this path? You know, uh, I feel that's a little clumsy, but I feel a little clumsy at the moment. It's, it's big, you know, I, I've been holding some dreams and visions for, you know, what this next part looks like. And, um, and I hold those very close to my heart, you know, um, there's just, I, I, I want to see the execution of what I've been holding in my heart. Oh. So if you can, if you can hold that for me, the, you know, the visions I'm holding in my heart that, that, you know, they unfold. Oh, okay. Here you go. We're going to send you some energy. Are you ready to catch it? I'm catching it. <laughs> here you go. Whew. Oh, seeing you and you're beautiful, blessed. You're so blessed and a blessing to so oh. many and always have been and always will be a place in my heart as well as everyone's heart. So thank you so much for uh, sharing and boy, the ultimate freedom is right here. Right. Thank, thank you so, so much, Judy. Um, I, I'd like to share one thing as we close. Let me see if I can bring it up. Um, oh, well, I can't share my screen, so that's I can, okay. I, no, I can help you. I can uh, make out, uh, don't worry. We got this down. I'm gonna make you, uh, we can do this, right? <laughs> There you yes. Go. So, so okay. just from there, I think you can do it now. Go you ahead. think so? Just from um, a perspective of freedom and a veteran and what it means to serve. Um, I just wanted to share this at the end. Um, and I'll, I'll just leave it there for you to read unless you want me to read it. I would um, love to have you read it. Yeah. 
A veteran's strength is measured by the size of her heart. She is respectfully humble. She will stand with honor. She will fight with love. In the face of adversity for the ones she loves, she will be a voice and a shield. She will be a beacon to light the way home for the old. She will gently make way for the young. She is a sister, mother, daughter, grandmother, spouse. Um, go, it goes on and on, and she is a veteran. And you know that's how I feel like I lived my career. And that's how I hope that I'm remembered, that, that I executed with love. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What a powerful ending. Yeah. There you are. And you know what, Judy, I just have to say to you and the Paradigm Shifters community, thank you. Your presence in the world is just a joy. And whenever you're around, the <laughs> smiles and the energy just, they're infectious. Um, I, you know, when, when I get somewhere and Judy Matejcik is there, uh, I know there's a happy energy all around. And a party. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, thanks, Cindy. Oh, and a party. Yeah. <laughs>